Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. And this show is about Plymouth County real estate. Uh, we're giving information today in the show about February activity at the Registry of Deeds. The show is taped in March. We'll be talking about some of our history in the month of March. Uh, we're also going to have some great guests on the show, Assistant Registry of Deeds, Tim White, and the IT Director at the County Registry of Deeds, Christine Richards talking about a new fraud alert program. Uh, the headline for this month was, this year's kind of weather was good for business. And you get a C coming across the screen, a bot shot of sales of property, deeds. Uh, it was a good month in Plymouth County for February. We recorded 565 deeds, sales of property in February, compared to the 637 in January, 28% more than last February, which was 441 deeds. And year to date, over two months, we're off to a great start. We're up 27% over last year at this time. The next bar chart you're going to see is of mortgages. Uh, we had a, another good recording month for mortgages. There were 1,505 mortgages recorded in February of this year, more than the 1,412 in January, up 11% compared to last February. And over the first beginning of the month, we're, we're doing very well. However, last year, we were up 25% over the year before. More and more people are using mortgages, not just to purchase homes, but also to take advantage of the still low interest rates. A lot of people have followed what the Federal Reserve has been looking to do over the last several months, but interest rates are still very, very low. And if you have not refinanced, it's a good thing to take a look at. The next bar chart you're going to see is of foreclosure deeds. We still have some very difficult and troublesome issues in Plymouth County, particularly in some communities, about foreclosures. There were 66 foreclosure deeds that went on record in Plymouth County in February, more than the 52 in January. A foreclosure deed is when a lender has taken back property from the owner because of not paying the mortgage primarily. There were 94% more foreclosure deeds this February than last year. In over two months of data, it's 62% higher. I, I will tell everyone, if you are in the foreclosure deed or foreclosure notice stat status, meaning that you're having trouble paying your mortgage, don't hesitate. Call a federal housing counselor. Sometimes they can help you modify your loan. So the next bar chart is foreclosure notices. A foreclosure notice is the document that we receive at the Registry of Deeds that identify that someone's in the process of a foreclosure. There were 154 foreclosure notices across Plymouth County recorded in February, way up from the 77 in January. And as I said before, a lot of lenders are just trying to get caught up with things that have been hanging around for a long time and they're moving forward. On the next just, uh, document you're going to see is a list of foreclosures in orders of notice by community. And what you'll see in that chart, there are some communities, Brockton, Plymouth, Wyham as examples, that are facing more difficulty than others. Again, if you're having any trouble, don't wait. Call a federal housing counselor for help. Uh, so I'm going to go into a couple of things about some of the news over the past month. First, I want to highlight that our training room will be opening again the first Thursday of the month, April 7th at 9 o'clock. Uh, if you're interested in a very um, good training program to show how you can more efficiently work our website, uh, please call and sign up. Uh, we held Marshfield office hours in March, in Pembroke in February. Um, so uh, we're getting around to the towns. Um, March 24th 
is the town hall in Marshfield. Um, we're going to be talking about in the next segment that fraud alert program that I talked about. Again, Tim White and Christine Richards from our office will be here. So we'll see you in the next segment. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even brought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Welcome back to the Registers Report. Again, my name is John Buckley. I'm the Registrar of Deeds of Plymouth County. And this segment of the show is about something educational in nature. We've had commercial real estate brokers, closing attorneys, assessors, appraisers, anyone involved in the real estate community. But today, we're gonna to highlight a program that is really new with the Registry of Deeds, and it's about protecting your property. I have two great guests with me today. Assistant Registrar of Deeds, Tim White. Welcome, Tim. Thanks, John. Glad to be here. And Christine Richards, our IT Director. Welcome, Christine. Thank you. Nice to be here. You both have uh, been on the show before. and um, We have. Thank you for coming. And what we're going to talk today is about our new Fraud Alert program. Uh, you'll see when you come into our main office in Plymouth, or in one of our satellite offices, Rockland or Brockton, these little flyers. And basically what they say is to reduce the risk of fraud, sign up uh, on our site, uh, put your email in there. Anytime that your name gets entered into our system, you'll get an email. You want to describe that a little bit? Sure. Um, so if you go to our website, the Plymouth County uh, Registry of Deeds, there is a link that will open up to our fraud alert program. And you'll have to complete some information, but once you complete that information, you will, any, any time someone records anything against your property uh, in Plymouth County, you will receive an email alert. So if someone uh, recorded a, a lien against your property, unbeknownst to you, this email would give you that early um, information that that had, had actually happened. It's also going to be uh, useful when you, if you refinance your property. And during the refinancing process, oftentimes you need to have a prior mortgage discharged. And it will give you an alert that that mortgage discharge has gone on record. So it's a, it's a, a terrific program. Um, it, uh, it's just another piece of the puzzle in this day and age with, with uh, data breaches and things of that nature where you can uh, protect your your own property. And of course, for a lot of us, our, our homes, our real property are our most valuable asset. Yeah, we're going to get into some other issues that we will talk about that you ought to be aware of, people ought to be aware of to protect themselves. Uh, but I'd like to ask Christine to describe the actual process when somebody pulls up their access to this uh, new program online. Sure. Our website is www.plymouthdeeds.org. We have two links on the home page, one on the right-hand side uh, in the yellow highlighted area and one under recent updates. Both will bring you to a page that describes what um, Tim just told you about what, it's, what the purpose of the site is for. And then there's a link to the actual site. Um, there you enter your name, your email address, and any names that you want us to find within our database and notify you about. You can put your, your name, your spouse's name, your children's name, and the site will um, then alert you. So I know that in other shows, we have described for our viewers what our system is based upon, a grantor, grantee search. Uh, it's one thing to have millions of documents recorded at the registry of deeds, have the images available, but in order to find everything related to that property, there has to be a search mechanism. And the Commonwealth of Mass over hundreds of years has decided in land records to have it either be a grantor-grantee system, a grantor 
in a deed is the person granting out the interest, basically selling the property. The grantee is the person who has purchased the property. And the reverse is true in a mortgage when you're the uh, person that is you know, allowing a mortgage on your property to get the money usually to buy the property, you are granting them an interest in your property. So then you are the grantor and the lender would be the grantee. And so that this search system would basically, if your name came up uh, from some document that got recorded and entered by our staff um, with the indexing information, you would get that email. Yep. And that email would include the name that it was recorded under, the date, the type of document it right. is, um, the book and the page, and the instrument number. And from there, you can access our search site and look at that document more closely and view the image. And on our website, we have a, um, a, a guide, I guess, that would tell you what different shorthand descriptions are of documents. We have, there is a link on our site, um, both on our search site and our PlymouthDeeds.org site, and it gives a, a, a definition of what all the document abbreviations are. Right. Mortgage would be? Uh, MTG. Yeah. And a deed would? Actually, a deed is spelled, spelled out, out the whole deed. deed. Right. Yep. Yep. And that's a good thing for people to look at as they uh, right. get into this program. So uh, it's a great thing for people uh, to consider. Um, like a lot of things that we do at the registry, like the Homestead Act, which we've talked about in the past, to protect you from outside creditors is another option to help you protect your property. And I know um, we wanted to share a little bit of information about some of the um, almost fraudulent types of situations we get when, when people will send letters out telling people they need a certified copy of the deed. You want to talk about that? Sure. Um, it, it's come to our attention on a number of occasions that um, residents of Plymouth County receive a solicitation in the mail from companies typically out of state that say that um, if you send us $75, we will send you a certified copy of your deed. Um, you have to give us your book and page and your address and all that stuff, and, and, uh, and we'll, then we'll get it. And we will forward that deed to you at the nominal price of $75. What um, folks should know is that you can purchase a copy of your deed or any of the documents that are recorded uh, in your name at the registry for a dollar per page. So a typical deed would cost $2. Um, so this is another example in this day and age with the internet and with the data that's out there that um, unscrupulous folks can take advantage, try to take advantage of you if you're not vigilant. And like the fraud alert program, uh, we like to make sure folks are aware of the, this type of, and, and I think it really is fraudulent to, to charge someone $75 for a deed they could pay $2 for. Sure, every time we get a request in from those companies asking for copies of the deeds and list a number of homeowners, yeah. we know that they've been taken advantage of because you can go to one of our, of our offices and get a deed for a dollar page. Right. I think, well, I think it, one important thing to remember also, when you're getting a copy from us, we're certifying that it is a true and attested copy. And that is something that the other companies cannot do, is certify that that is a true copy. Right. So I also um, have mentioned previously in the show, but want to mention it again, that people can go onto our website, PlymouthDeeds.org, and search all of their records. If they want to look back and make sure that a mortgage they paid off several years ago had a discharge recorded, which is a lot easier to do when you're not in a hurry to find it, it's a good thing to do. Uh, and I know I, I mentioned earlier in the show that we run a monthly training program for municipal employees, but for members of the general public. And it's a two hour program that you run once a month, it's a great program. Uh, the next one is Thursday, April 7th. Do you want to describe a little bit of what you do at that program? Sure. Um, it's, it's, again, a two hours, maybe two and a half hours. And we talk about how to look up your property, how to use our search site, how to get the most of it, what the um, tips and tricks are to get you the information that you need in a timely fashion. 
um, what the document abbreviations are, what a grantor and grantee is, what the difference is between registered land and unregistered land, and it, it really, we go into depth on how the registry works and how to use it to your advantage. And it's been a really big hit. It has. We have a lot of people that have gone through over the last couple of years. And we have a whole room set up now, which, you know, there was another um, sort of public service we're trying to do at the registry. We have a training room set up with Nine stations. Nine t different uh, computer stations. So you can sit right down and you get that hands-on training. It's not just listening to Christine, although she's great to listen to. Uh, but it, it actually, uh, uh, you get to do it yourself. And, right. it, and there's nothing like that to learn how to work on a website. Well, well thank you for coming. I, it's another opportunity for the public to protect themselves, be a little proactive, and, yeah. and uh, protect, as you said, most people's most valuable asset. So thank you again for coming on. Thank you for having me. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Great to be here. Great. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to the Registers Report. I want to thank Tim White and Christine Richards for the discussion with me about our Fraud Alert program. And as we mentioned during that segment of the show, make sure that you take a look at filing a homestead on your property through the Homestead Act. Uh, we've talked about that in other programs. If you go onto our website, PlymouthDeeds.org, you can get more information about it. It's a great um, tool to protect your property against outside creditors. Uh, be careful uh, when people are out there trying to take advantage of your property, whether it be through uh, the high cost of copies of your deeds that we mentioned or anything else. Just be aware because the scammers of the world out there know that your property is valuable and they want a piece of it, so be aware of that. But in this segment of the show, we always try to do something a little lighter in nature. And this being the month of March, we have a lot of our great history in Plymouth County in America to talk about. Uh, some of the holidays in March we'll mention as part of this segment of the show. Uh, we began daylight savings time. Uh, thankfully, uh, we got through the winter. As I mentioned early in the show, when I talked about the number of recordings in January and February as compared to last year, part of it was because we had a great start of the season a great January and February for weather, unlike last year, though I won't bring it up again, I promise that. Um, Thursday, March 17th, is a very uh, big holiday here in Plymouth County. Um, St. Patrick's Day, uh, it is a big holiday in Plymouth County because Plymouth and Norfolk County have the highest percentage of people of Irish ancestry in all of America. And so as you see these parades and celebrations, it's part of um, Irish Americans celebrating their heritage. Uh, President Obama uh, has designated the whole month of March uh, for Irish American Heritage Month. Um, March 19th, we always kind of make a mention of, it was William Bradford, the second colonial governor the person who began land records in Plymouth County, the person that we refer to when we say America's first registry of deeds was his handwriting that began the record system of land records in the country. And we certainly want to tip our hat to William Bradford. Um, March 20th was a big day here in Plymouth County. There were two great parades in Plymouth County, the Abington St. Patrick's Day Parade and the Situate St. Patrick's Day Parade. Um, many, many people came through these parades and saw the step dances and the bands, and it just had a good time out there in our community. Also in March, not always in March, is Easter Sunday, which is coming up. 
So I'm going to talk about a couple of our notable land records, um, one of which um, is a very significant one that was recently celebrated. Uh, there was a theater in Brockton where they had a very tragic fire back in 1941. Thirteen firefighters were killed. Still the largest loss of life of public responders in Massachusetts. Um, it was a theater. Uh, when the firefighters rushed into that theater and the balcony collapsed on them, it was the largest loss of life ever in the country. Uh, there was a very nice monument in their honor in City Hall Plaza in Brockton. And recently, uh, there was a celebration in remembrance of the 75th anniversary of that. And it's used now not just to commemorate their life, but also as a day to honor our first responders, police, fire, and others that rush into uh, difficulties when others are rushing out. Uh, that monument is certainly a great thing to visit, and uh, it was a very nice ceremony on that day. A couple of our um, notable Irish um, American people, um, a lot of people from Boston of the Irish used to summer in Hull. Three that I'll mention right off the top. Um, James Michael Curley had a summer house in Hull. Uh, John Boyle O'Reilly, a very famous Irish American poet, whose summer house became the Hull Public Library. And the person you're going to see right now, Honey Fitz, John Honey Fitz Fitzgerald. He was the grandfather of President John F. Kennedy. He was a former Boston Common Council person, a member of the Senate, a congressman. He was the first American-born Irish Catholic mayor of Boston. His daughter, Rose Elizabeth Fitzgerald, married Joseph Kennedy in 1914 had m many children, including John F. Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy, the s a senator from New York, and our great senator in Massachusetts, Senator Edward M. Kennedy. Quite a tradition, but there certainly is a Plymouth County collection connection there. Other notable Irish that we've highlighted before, John L. Sullivan, the famous boxer, uh, retired to Abington. Um, King Kelly, a Cooper, Cooperstown Baseball Hall of Fame baseball player, lived in Hull. Uh, Billy McGonigal, who helped invent the catcher's mitt and managed the Brooklyn Bridegrooms to back-to-back -back American League and National League pennants, uh, is also in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Notable Land Record Collection. They recently added a plaque in his honor at Brockton City Hall. All these great people that contributed quite a bit to our history around early 1900, uh, all of which are recognized. But a more recent person I want to say, Senator Anna Buckley, uh, was a state senator from Abington, no relation to me, a great lady. She served on the Brockton City Council, um, got elected to the State Senate, rose all the way to be the Vice Chair of the Senate Ways and Means, and served Brockton in the State Senate, very active in the Democratic Party, in the Massasoit um, Center for Fine Arts, is named after Anna Buckley. Again, someone more recent that some of you will remember. and. Um, Many other Irish Americans have established themselves in Plymouth County. I want to thank Lorna Green Baker, Christine Richards, helping me put the show together, Dave Antoine, Tom Bolas, and Erica Christensen. To thank my two guests today. And I want to thank PAC TV for allowing me to tape the show here and share this information around Plymouth County. So happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone, and we'll see you next month. Thank you.